Hey, hey, this is Monkey Puzzle, and welcome to part two of episode nine. I'm going to jump right into this one without an intro and get right to work. And this is where we make the Cursed Earth mob grinder that we've been waiting for. I have, anyway. I spent all of part one getting ready for it, and I've got this nice big hole in the ground, and I think I'm ready to put it together. So I've changed the plan a little bit. Uh, let's get some of the things I need on deck. Uh, first, we're going to use these drawbridges. We're going to use curth, Cursed Earth. Let me put away the blackberries. And I'm going to need some sticky pistons and some blocks of some kind. And let's go ahead and do this. Now, I want to leave three spaces above uh, so I can get Endermen in here as well. I should be able to make them work with this system. And let's go ahead and put a drawbridge right there and if i've spaced this right that should work out fine this is i've carved out a space that's exactly two chunks across from here to there is 32 blocks and these things unmodified can eject 15 uh, blocks from within them so let's go ahead and put that inside there break that up put that in and uh, we're not going to disguise it for now we want to know that it's a drawbridge get that ready for the next one now, this is going to send those cursed earth out in a line like that, 15 blocks long. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to fight any mobs. And then when they appear, I want them to get pushed off, just like a lot of basic mob grinders work nowadays. So to do that, right at this level, I'm going to put a piston. And then on that... I'm going to put uh, one of these blocks. I chose these just because they look kind of like a bullseye. It could be any block, and aesthetically, I don't know if that's the right choice or not. Now, originally, the way I was going to trigger these was with tripwire across, but there are some downsides to that. If I hung the tripwire up here, then every time this came out, it would break the tripwire. Tripwire doesn't need a block under it, per se, but then when a block does go under it, it tries uh, to go down onto that block. And then when it uh, moves, it breaks it. So we can't do that. And I thought about maybe putting the tripwire down here. I could do that, but then I couldn't remove the cursed earth. Because uh, if I did, it would break it again. And also I want to be able to get want any height of mob i don't want tripwire up here and having one high mobs uh down here not being able to trigger it so there's a spider outside somewhere and he knows where he i am but we're just going to ignore him for now he's not going to distract me with his little creepy crawly feet everywhere uh the other thing i figured out with the tripwire if we did that we could not put a block just use the piston head itself and when it pushes for it's an entity not a block and it doesn't break the tripwire but then again we have the problem with the one high mobs also what happens is if the mob glitches into the piston head then it the tripwire stays triggered and then this whole row becomes inoperative so instead of tripwire which was my original plan and i accumulated all the string for it I'm going to use this thing that I just checked out. I went through the whole NEI looking for a detector and came up with this entity detector from random things. Railcraft has a mob detector, but the mobs have to be in a, in a rail cart, a mine cart first. So this thing is pretty neat. It's so cool. It's almost cheaty, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's in this pack and we're going to use it. Uh, man, random things, open blocks, and extra utilities all by themselves could be a great mod pack because there's so many things in them. So I'm just going to put this thing down anywhere for now, and we'll figure out the exact placement as soon as we go. Let's see. Let's see if we can grab... Um, I think these things have a ten maximum 10-block 10 radius, and this is going to be 30 blocks of Cursed Earth. So they're a little too big, so we're going to use one per line. So I think I'll set them with an eight block radius, which will be about one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. Now there's multiple places I could put them. I could put it right here, right on the same axis with that. Let's try that and see how it works. And if we don't like it, then uh, we can play with it a bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just hollow this out a bit more uh, so that we can go ahead and place the rest of this stuff. I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, there's that. So we got a whole bunch of space. And now we need to pay, place down a whole bunch of pistons. And I made a bunch up. I used the Mine Factory Reloaded uh, raw rubber instead of slime uh, for these, which was really handy because I don't really have that much slime ball, that many slime balls yet. I guess I could make them out of the bl blue congealed slime from those floating uh, Tinker's Construct slime islands. I sure wish those spiders would go away. Uh, okay, and then let's get a bunch of these. And this is longer than this one's going to be. I'm actually moving on to the uh, second line of Cursed Earth, but uh, we might as well do this. And I went ahead and lit this place up because I'm going to cover it with the dark glass so this light won't affect, but I wanted you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Last video, I had to brighten it just because I had to be in the dark areas. So the last bit of this is we need to connect the redstone uh, between these two. So let's go ahead, open that up, I think. Uh, how should I do this? Um, and let me get into my technical bag and see if I've got some... A red alloy wire in here. I do. I got a bunch ready to go. So we're going to just stick that on the bottom of the pistons and trigger them that way. See, if this was 8, that would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I'm going to go away for a minute. I'm a bat, but for some reason I don't seem to be able to go in here at this point. I'm going to go away for a minute. Aha. And uh, let the spider forget about me. I'll be right back. He's an angry spider. Sorry, you're angry. <laughs> I hope that feels better. Okay, back to it. Okay, so let's connect this entity detector uh, with the rest of these guys. Whoa, and it is detecting me probably. So that's working. So it can detect all kinds of things. No filter will detect everything. You can detect just players. Uh, now see it retracted because uh, it's only retracting mon uh, detecting monsters uh, or items. Oh, that's interesting. Living entities. I wonder, I guess the undead wouldn't count at that point. I wonder if creepers are considered alive. Villagers, animals, and back to no filter. So I'm going to leave it at that for now just so I can test it. And then when it's working, we'll change it to uh, mobs, monsters. So radius X, radius Y, radius Z. So what do we want? For Y, uh, we want it to detect um, one, two, three, at least three high, uh, five high, let me see, wait, one, two, three, four, four high would get up to here. And in my test before this thing, these settings are a square, not a circle. So that makes it pretty easy. Um, I think these are going to actually be able to work for multiple lines of this cursed earth. I'm only going to need, I think about four in total to do the whole thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then let me see, this is my X, I believe. Yeah. And this is my Z. So the Z 
we can actually make zero, I believe. And that means that it will only work on the same plane as this um, detector is. The Y we've already set to five, and we're gonna set the X to eight to cover the whole line of the cursed Earth. I think that will work. I may have to turn it one down, actually. I think that's right, because then that'll be seven plus one on either side. So that should be perfect. That should be 15. Uh, let's see if that works. So right here, I shouldn't trigger it. And then if I go here, I trigger it. And it pushes me out of the way and stops. It's exactly what we want. Wow, that actually hurt me. <laughs> it's, don't hurt me. And let's see if I go up here. That works. That's excellent. And over here, it's not doing anything. And what about if I go up here? Okay, let's see where it starts. And it should start right there. Awesome. So let's see. Let's make sure that that's right. I'm just going to do that to mark it. Uh, where's my trusty tape measure? Now we got zombies upstairs. Starting from there to there is 15 blocks. So I think we got it just right. And then with the, um, whatchamacallit, the cursed earth uh, coming out of here, let's just do that real quick. Man, I've got too much stuff. Here, let's put some things up here and give myself a little bit more room. Got my doggy shaping, shaking themselves in the background. Hopefully that's not bothering you guys too much, but here we go. Oops. <laughs> Triggered it. So let's pull out the cursed earth. Hopefully we won't get too many spawn spawns right now. Oh, we did. We got a skeleton. Oh, he jumped on top. Interesting. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, cover up... But no, that won't work. Hmm. Oh, and now it's detecting the arrows. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, before it was working flawlessly. I hadn't seen one jump up above like that before. That could be a bad thing. If that works like that. Hopefully that won't be the case. It won't happen ever again. Um, but you guys get the gist of the concept. So... So I think I'm going to go ahead and just set the rest of these up and we'll see. We can debug it from there. Hopefully we won't have that problem with them jumping up. If need be, I can make two lines of pistons pushing out, but that would be more expensive. And anyway, like I said, that was the first time I actually saw an entity get up on top of them. Uh, we could also reduce the Y so that it only triggers when they're standing right here. So if they jump up here, it'll release. And then when they come back down, it'll push them off again. That's probably the best way to do it, except that then I'd need more of these. All this technical stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set more of this up, and I will be back with you. I had to grab some more of these entity detectors, so I thought I'd show you the recipe for them. It's pretty simple. It's expensive for ender pearls. Uh, takes two each, but not much more than that. So I'm gonna grab three more for now. They're pretty useful. Uh, maybe I'll grab a uh, total of uh, five more, so I'll have a total of six, and we'll see where that gets us. I can make more if we need to. All right, as I started to put this together, I gave it further thought and realized that I'm going to use only one of these per line because I want them to operate independently. If I have them all operating multiple sections, they're all going to extend when there's a mob on any one of them. And also if something glitches out, like that skeleton thing up there, then only one line will be broken and the rest will keep working. But to prevent that particular thing going on, I'm going to limit the Y. And that means that I want to put this on either the same level as this or no, actually I want to put it on the same level as these blocks. Cause if I put it down here and I had the Y only one, 
it will still extend down one and I'm going to stack these pretty closely together so it will detect an enderman's head below it as well as the feet of a mob up here so I the only place I can put it is either behind the pistons over there or on this side of the grinder the only problem with this side would be that how to get the wiring across the the mob spawning area over to here without going all the way up or all the way down I don't want to get into wireless redstone on this so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it back here if I can get in there the downside of this is I'm gonna have to extend the Z uh, 3 to reach out to here um, which means it'll extend 3 this way but I checked and I'm pretty sure that I don't have uh, any outside area within three in that direction. So hopefully that's correct. And what I'll do is I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll put this here. That's well, triggering that one already, it's detecting me. And so we said we're gonna make the Z uh, three, and we're gonna make the Y uh, equal to, I guess at this point it can be zero. And then the X is going to be seven. And let's see if I got that right. Whoop. What happened to me? And we also have to hook this up to everybody. So let's put that there. All right, that works. And then now things should, these should only trigger, hopefully, if I get right here. No, I didn't set it right. I'm gonna debug this for a second and I'll be right back well I didn't change anything and it seems to be working now <laughs> I get a little suffocated each time probably because I'm a bat I think I just wasn't in the right position when I tested it but that seems to be working right when I'm in range it's hitting me so hopefully it's activating only right now if a mob is gonna be in this one high space uh, it'll basic, basically detect their feet, uh, which I think all their hitboxes extend down to the ground. I will see. Uh, the other downside of sticking them back there is it's going to be hard to uh, adjust them all if I need to. But I'm going to set them up this way, and we'll see how that works. While I was doing this, I ran out of the red alloy wire. I just made some more, but I thought I'd show you guys how to do it because Project Red's a little bit different than Red Power, which is what most people were familiar with. You basically just take iron and you surround it with redstone. So it's pretty expensive for redstone, and you get these uh, red iron compounds. And then you just take those and go ahead and um, cook them up. And then you get these, and then you just stretch them out uh, three high like that and it turn each of them turns into 12 alloy wire so you get your redstone back in the end and that's how you do it I'll have to brighten this up so you can see it but the settings on the detector do not work uh, so I will have to change that and I've got these all hooked up to uh, one piece of red alloy wire now, <laughs> so they retract together, and eventually I'll hook up both sides. Okay, so I think I got it working. I just changed this to uh, Y equals 1, which theoretically should detect entities from here to here. Now, when it was at zero, it wasn't detecting them standing right here. So hopefully it won't detect them up there. We'll see. But I think this should work. We'll try. Um, and also you can see that I've set the uh, filter to monster. So I don't trigger it anymore. Uh, so we got four entity detectors uh, and four drawbridges. I'm going to extend it further down than this. But let's go ahead and just see how this works. Turn that one on. And well, for the heck of it, let's uh, turn this side on too. And it's a little bright in here still, so I won't get too many spawns. But just to test it out, seems to be working great. Oh, that was a spider <laughs> outside. 
They're still finding me out there. And it's daytime even. Must be another angry spider. Oh, that's a regular one. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Another test. Seems to be working great. So the next thing to do oop, would be, and that worked. He actually tried to jump on top and it retracted and then knocked him off again. So we've overcome that possible glitch. And this looks like it's going to be great. And then when it's really dark, we should get better spawns. So to do that, I, now I'm going to use this dark glass that I made in part one. And I'm going to use this saw to get more out of it. Because the stuff was expensive. And I want to use a lot of it. So let's go ahead and get all the way down to covers with this. And then it'll extend itself much further. And panels, and I don't know if I can fit covers in here. Okay, we've got to use those up. Oh, drop my saw. <laughs> I have to go get that in a second. But let's go ahead and re retract. Maybe get some stick. Retract these. Like I said, eventually I'll get this all to a centralized place. And that was the great thing about the drawbridges is you can turn this thing off. So, yeah, let's uh, do that. And I'm going to go ahead and basically cover this. So they got to be able to drop. So we need one, two spaces. So I'm going to put them out here on the edge of the third block. I believe that's what I did. Right there. And that's going to take a while. It's going to be a little finicky to place all these. But I'm going to do that all the way down and cover this whole front part. And then this part uh, doesn't need to be exposed at all anymore. I should probably put some ornate blocks in here. Uh, but that's what's going to happen is it's going to get covered up. Take this off. I'm flying, so it takes a little bit longer. And then cover the front. And then it should stay completely dark in there. These torches will get snuffed out. Not snuffed out, but blocked out when these extend. So that's actually a good place to leave light because then when I retract, it will be lit inside. It also keeps mobs from spawning in this one little spot right here I had to leave so I could reach this because down here, I only get the hitbox of the red alloy wire. So I needed that. And then the this will give me a little service passage as long as I'm a bat and I'm one block high, I can get in here and make adjustments if I want. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll come back to you and we'll test it like that. I'm going to go get my saw right now. <laughs> Just found out another uh, wrinkle in my plan is that the dark glass as a micro block does not block light. I tried it as a cover and as a panel and as a slab, and it doesn't work. So. I'm going <laughs> to not be able to extend my uh, the amount of dark glass I have by making it into micro blocks. I'm going to have to make the full blocks. Okay. So using the dark glass as whole blocks, this is as far as I was able to get. I even went on another squid hunting mission and used up all my cotton that I'd harvested. That stuff's expensive. And of course, I don't have to use it. This is purely aesthetic. I just, <laughs> part of my concept is just being able to see the whole wall of this happening. I got this far, and also I'm running out of time for this episode, so I'm going to have to have a part three on this mob grinder. But I'll show you what I did so far. Uh, I got everything closed up. The two drawbridges you saw me put on each side are now disguised as stone blocks. Uh, they'd be about right there and right there. And I've got a little ornate thing going around. Um, yeah, and I can put the glowstone on now because this will keep the light coming out. So let's see how it works. Uh, get, turn it on both sides still. So there's that side. And you can see that as they come out, they block the light. I put uh, micro block panels to close off the redstone area back there. That one's already working. And they provide light inside uh, still, but then when they get covered up by the cursed earth, it all goes dark. So that's pretty dark. It's not completely dark yet, but you can see that we're already getting quite a few spawns. Let's hang out a moment and see what happens. 
Yeah, and I'm sure if we got complete darkness, it would be even faster. So I put uh, three more sets of drawbridges going down, and I think this is as many as I'm going to do for now, which works out perfectly. The last level of Cursed Earth will be on standing area uh, right here. So you'll be able to stand here and watch all five levels going, and we'll have this whole area with dark glass, so I need that much more. Uh, and then uh, I'll probably get shot a few times <laughs> this way, but then I'm going to put a line of vines and buttons going across uh, so that there's going to be a, a reset of the mob's fall. So they will get to here, the vines will reset it, and then they'll all start falling from here. And then go down about 20 blocks, which is going to be about here. And at this point, we're going to need the grinding, actual grinding station. So I'm going to do a combination of probably slime channels. Everybody's been using the conveyor belts, and those are cool, and I haven't used them yet, but since everybody got to it first, I'm going to try the slime channels, because no one seems to be using those, and they're supposed to be good as conveyor belts as well. And so, yeah, the mobs will take about 20 blocks of fall damage, which should get them to about a half a heart. Uh, maybe I can, I'll fine-tune it to about where it's going to be, but either way, that's going to be one hit for a turtle or for an autonomous activator, and I'm going to set up some system of them going across here and put a floor at this level, and so this will be the bottom of the grinder, and maybe we'll just put a glass floor so we can see down the bedrock down there, um, but for now, I can run it like this, and if I want mob drops, I can come down here and hang out with my luggage. Hello, luggage. Oh, there he is, who usually shows up right away and comes and eats up all the drops. I've already gotten uh, quite a few ender pearls in the testing of this. The endermen are definitely uh, dropping their pearls when they fall. And yeah, I don't really need most of these drops anymore, although the bones could be useful. Uh, we did get a little, another little miniature red heart, uh, but those aren't going to do me much good until I get some necrotic bones. But yeah, I got a couple ender pearls just in the last test. So, yeah, the mob grinder with the cursed earth is almost done. Uh, we can see it taking shape. And with all the special mobs and everything, we'll see what kind of drops we get. But yeah, that is it taking shape. So I'm going to have to sign off for now. Next time I come back, we'll definitely uh, get this all closed in and get the grinding station going on down here. And then from that, I'm going to be able to get both the liquid XP for enchanting and anvilene. <laughs> That's now a verb. And as well as beginning the mob essence. And then that's going to allow me to set up an auto spawner, maybe over here somewhere, where I can just capture any mob I want and put it in there and just have a more focused farm, whether I want blaze rods, which are going to be great as a fuel source, or ender pearls, or, or uh, skeletons, or whatever, or take it off to the nether and maybe have a chance of getting my necrotic bones and collecting heads with cleavers and so on and so forth. So this is the beginning. Um of all the mob drops and XP and all that stuff we could ever want. So I hope this was interesting to you. And I, if you made it to this point, I really thank you for watching. And I will be back soon, probably midweek, with the end of this. All right, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.